Hello everyone! As you may have heard, Coca-Cola is in a little bit of a pickle today because images have leaked on the internet with them telling their employees to be less white. And uh, a lot of people are wondering if Coca-Cola has the wisdom to understand that this is an arbitrary characteristic that people have no control over. Or perhaps are they suggesting that their employees should get a little bit of a tan? All jokes aside, the actual conversation that needs to take place is why do people think that Coca-Cola is doing this for benevolent reasons, that they're doing this in order to educate the employees, to make society a better place? Because if that's the case, then why do they not put this ideology on their product? Why is it that when you're drinking Coca-Cola as a Caucasian, you're not also being educated on the label about what a racist piece of shit you are and how to improve? No, this is only an in-house matter. The second question that you need to ask is why is it that only their employees get to benefit from this wisdom? Why don't they lecture the shareholders about their whiteness? Why don't they lecture their CEOs? Uh, and why is it that they're not lecturing people about the horrible history that Coca-Cola had when they were working with Nazi Germany? Or for some reason, when corporations used to do bad things in the past, well, those were different people at the corporation, weren't they? But when a country does bad things in the past, oh no, we need to hold people accountable today for what the country did in the past, because the country was built on bad things. Imagine if you were to teach the employees at Coca-Cola that Coca-Cola was built on bad things, that they, they took Nazi gold, uh, and that, that is now ingrained in their company, that is like part of what makes Coca-Cola. Uh, you know, like, wh why don't they do that type of teaching as well, next to the, the studies that they're already promoting? Because huh? apparently now Coca-Cola is like a university. You, you don't go there in order to just create better beverage. No, you go there in order to get educated. On your resume, under education, you can now mark Coca-Cola University, right? Why do they do this? How is this making them money? And the answer is simple. It's a union busting technique. Whole Foods already talked about it. These companies, they're very left-leading in nature, very progressive, and they talk about all the correct things. But when it comes to union, it's almost like they, they raise the garlic against the vampire. They raise the cross against the heathens. They, they do not like it when employees unionize. And it doesn't matter what you think about unions, if you like them or dislike them. The reality is that the corporations dislike them even more. So they don't like it. <clears throat> and it's the same way that Californian prisons are being run. Racism is promoted there so that the inmates... When they riot, they go against each other rather than they go against the guards. It's a tactic. It doesn't have a 100% success rate, but it's a tactic nonetheless that has been proven successful. Divide people, make them dislike each other so that they don't look up. Because you see, all of a sudden, it's not that Coca-Cola is oppressing you. Right? No, no, no. Because now you're not all employees at Coca-Cola. You're not all in it together. No, because you see now Coca-Cola has different types of employees. You get Asian employees working at Coca-Cola and you get white employees working at Coca-Cola. And you shouldn't look up and see uh, uh, about the working condition and about the wages and about... No, no, no. None of that. That up, The problem doesn't come from up. The problem comes from the same level with you. It's other employees that are out to get you. That's why they're doing this. That, that's how they're making money out of it. It's a union busting technique. And it's also part of corporate culture nowadays. Like corporate cultures means you get to hire a diversity officer. And when corporations hire people, they don't hire people based on merit. They hire people based on a license. Like this person went to a university and they got the license to prove it. So they look at the diploma. It's like, all right, well, this, this is going to be the new HR. And the HR does the same thing. When they promote material, they look at the license. And they're like, okay, well, I need to have some racial retreat where I teach people and employees about how to racism. Um, they, they are going to look at Robin DiAngelo, which is a famous book, right? Number one, trending, boom. And that's the, the material that they promote. 
They don't probably even read the book. They have no idea what is written there. Because if they read the book, you will notice at the beginning, Robin DiAngelo states that she is a racist. So why are you promoting the work of a racist then, is the question. Why, why is she still being promoted? Is it like a hacker man? You, you catch someone for being a hacker and then you put him in charge of security? Because he's that good? And you make him an anti-hacker? Is that what it is? It's like, okay, well, we need to find a racist person. And that racist person knows everything that is about racism. And they're going to be able to be in charge of educating other people on how not to be like them. Because that's what it seems, right? And, and the thing is, like, if you read Robert D'Angelo's book, <clears throat> you realize why censorship is required in order for this to work. It's why it only works in a corporate culture where people sit down and shut the fuck up because else they get fired. Like, no one is going to be able to talk or say anything against it. And why comments are disabled everywhere it's being promoted. It's because of how ridiculous the nonsense is. Like, the, it, it's, it, it cannot stand to any sort of scrutiny. This is why uh, free speech is the cancer to the, these types of ideologies. Because, like, nothing is built on logic. Like, let me give you an example, okay? So, for Robin D'Angelo, every white person is a racist. And if you generally believe that, if you truly believe that, then there is no point in trying to get people to stop being like that because it's in their core, it's in their being, right? So she, she doesn't believe a single person that's why it is not racist. Even she claims that she herself is. So there's now just two types of racism. There's good racists and bad racists. And it's based on if you acknowledge your racism. So if you acknowledge you become a good racist and everyone is a bad racist, but at least you get to feel good about yourself because you acknowledged it. But objectively, you're still a bad person. Now, let me, let me show you some interesting tidbits, right? So, so she claims that in the U.S. and other Western nations, white people are socialized to feel that they are inherently superior because they are white. Now, if I was there and I was allowed to speak, which, by the way, you definitely are not, I would ask the question, what does she mean by this? Like, can she name me a TV show? that encourages this? Can she name me a politician that's in power, that's encouraging this? Like, what, what are her experiences where she was socialized to feel this way? Who socialized her to feel this way? Like, give me the names. Because you'll notice everything is ambiguous. Like, there is no names, there is no perpetrator. It's just like, it's the culture. So that you don't hold anyone responsible. So that you can't quantify it and say, okay, well, today, racism is at 65%. Because of Robin D'Angelo's work, we're going to re-examine this two years from now and we're going to see if it's still at 65 or has it dropped a little bit, like how effective was her teachings. That's, that's the correct way of handling the situation. But no, like it's not meant to be handled. It's not meant to be quantified. It's not meant to receive feedback. I mean, the way this ideology is presented is that it says, White people are oppressive, arrogant, and ignorant. So, so it, it's presented like it's scientific. Like scientific theory has conducted that any person with Caucasian skin is having these negative traits. Which means that Robin D'Angelo herself also has these negative traits. It's kind of funny because if you look at it, Robin D'Angelo gets paid more than a person of color for doing the same job. But no one brings it up because... You are not allowed to comment on this. You're not, your input doesn't matter. You cannot point out the hypocrisy. You cannot question the logic or, or the moral consistency of this ideology. Nothing gets to be questioned. <clears throat> and this is why the ideology is so broken. Because it's not meant to stand up to scrutiny. It's meant to be backed by power. That's why it's being taught in corporations. You speak out, you get the, the power of the corporation descending upon you. And... It, this is why people on Twitter are upset because they're not in the corporate environment. They can articulate themselves and they can call this shit out. But this is where the other element of criticism that defends this ideology comes into play, which is if you criticize this ideology, you're a white supremacist. I mean, this is the same logic that if you were born in Salem and you didn't like the fact that the establishment there was persecuting women and you spoke out, it was only because you are a witch or witch adjacent and clearly not because you disagree with it on principle. It's the same argument that the evangelicals at my high school were using 
when they were being anti-gay and, and they were saying bad things about gay people and I would come up and ask them, it's like, hey man, come on, you, you don't even know a gay person. Like, you've never met one. Why are you saying these things? And they would be like, ah, V, are you gay? You know, it's like, do we need to hate you now? Do we need to persecute you now? Because that's the way they defend their ideology. Like, they don't have arguments or anything like that. Is that anyone criticizing them must be evil. There is no possible way that people can have other criticism about their ideology. You know, it, it, it's literally, it's like, oh, I, I guess it makes sense. I mean, if you're Robin D'Angelo and you think other people are like you, then maybe you do think that they're oppressive and arrogant. Because you have comments disabled on every YouTube video. People cannot speak out when you get at a conference. And you are oppressive as fuck, because you do this not to the CEO of the company, you don't do it to the people in power. You're not, you're not lecturing politicians, no, you're lecturing employees of a company that does beverage. Like, people without power. So you have to concoct this ideology that even though they don't have any power or status, like what fucking status does a person that puts caps on Coca-Cola bottles have? Like, let's be real, you know? But they go, no, 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 you see, their skin color gives them power, so technically, they have the same level of power in society as the CEO of the company because of, they, they share th this thing that they call white solidarity. So that's how the ideology functions, okay? It's not the rich versus the poor anymore because that affects Coca-Cola's bottom line and that hurts the company. No, now it's identity politics because that doesn't hurt Coca-Cola's bottom line. It doesn't hurt their, uh, <clears throat> their finances. Because all they have to do is to, okay, well, we're just going to put a person of color as a CEO and they are, they're, a, they're our mouthpiece because we paid them and they get to say whatever we want because it's a company, it's not a democracy. And they hide behind identity politics and it's like, oh, no, the oppression doesn't come from us. No, the oppression comes from among the little guys. The little people are the problem, not us. And, and that's why this ideology is being promoted. Let me know what you think. Uh, see you guys in the comment section.